Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to The Loft Cinema. My name is Jeff. I'm the program director here. Uh, and I just want to point out, if you enjoy horror films, I would highly recommend Where's My Roy Cohn? Uh, which is opening next week. Uh, it's a fascinating film, but it's um, pretty scary. But uh, I would check it out. Uh, so uh, today is a great example of why I love working here at the Loft Cinema and being a program director here. Uh, less than two hours ago, I was fully dressed as Michael Keaton in Beetlejuice for a, in full corpse makeup and costume for a free kid screening we were doing. And now that it's 2 p.m., I'm back, minus the corpse makeup and the pinstripe suit, uh, for the screening of a really great film, uh, the 1988 Oscar winner, Mississippi Burning. Uh, starring what I think are three of the very best American actors that we have, Gene Hackman, Willem Dafoe, and Francis McDormand, whom I've often said I am desperate to be friends with. I want to be friends with Francis McDormand because I know she would hate being friends with me, but I just think she's so cool. There's just something so great about her. Uh, and directed by Alan Parker, and if you're familiar with the work of Alan Parker, you know that he is a filmmaker with one of the most wonderfully eclectic and sometimes downright bizarre filmographies in film history. Uh, in addition to Mississippi Burning, Alan Parker has directed Evita, Fame, Midnight Express, Angel Heart, Bugsy Malone, uh, Angela's Ashes, and Pink Floyd, The Wall. So nobody can accuse Alan Parker of ever falling into a rut as a filmmaker, for sure. Uh, so Mississippi Burning is probably one of his most celebrated films, uh, nominated for seven Academy Awards, including Best Director, Best Picture, Best Ask Actor for uh, Gene Hackman, and Best Supporting Actress, my friend that I want forever, Frances McDormand, uh, and winner of one Oscar for Best Cinematography. This is a beautiful looking film. We're going to be screening it today on 35 millimeter film, uh, actual celluloid, the way it was meant to be seen in a movie theater, so I think it's gonna be really great uh, this, of course, is loosely based on a real-life incident in 1964 in Mississippi. Uh, this is a very powerful film. It's also uh, somewhat controversial, so I'm really glad that we're going to have this great discussion after the film with a very special guest, because the story of how this film got to the screen and the story got to the screen is really fascinating, so that's something you'll want to stick around for. Uh, today's screening is part of our ongoing series here at The Loft called Journalism on Screen, which celebrates the ever-increasing importance of real journalism and the role of hard-working, real journalists who I like to call the great American heroes. So thank you, journalists, for doing what you do. So Journalism on Screen is presented by The New York Times, The Arizona Daily Star, The Daily Wildcat UA TV3, The UA College of Social and Behavioral Sciences, The UA School of Journalism, Arizona Inn, and The Loft Cinema. So I'd like to thank all of them for their support. This is one of my very favorite series, uh, love it. Uh, so to introduce our special guests who are gonna be joining us after the film, uh, I would like to introduce Bill Schmidt, who teaches uh, advanced reporting and feature writing at the UA School of Journalism. He was also the former deputy managing editor of the New York Times where he worked for many years. He's also one of the driving forces of this series, Journalism on Screen, and he's a great guy, so please welcome Bill Schmidt. Hi, Bill. Jeff, thank you very much, and uh, welcome all of you to the 23rd edition uh, of our film program, Journalism on Screen. As Jeff mentioned, the School of Journalism began this program back in 2015 to show feature films and documentaries about journalism uh, and to, uh, uh, to explore the challenges uh, facing uh, journalism today. How do journalists me uh, mediate? How do they make sense? of an increasingly complicated world of complicated subjects like uh, the science of climate change or the fractured state of our national politics. Now, uh, as much as I would like to agree with Jeff, the journalists are heroes, are always heroes. Of course, in real life, as in the movies, they aren't always heroes. But I do hope all of us here today can agree on one thing, is that journalists are not the enemy. <laughs> the uh, serious journalism is vital. Serious journalism is vital to our democracy, the means by which we hold our institutions, uh, and that is whether we're talking about the, uh, our institutions here in Tucson, 
for the people in the White House. It's the way we hold them accountable for what they say and for what they do. Now, today's film is a bit different in the sense that it's not a film about journalism, but it is a film about storytelling, and storytelling is what Hollywood and journalism uh, have in common. Now, in theory, journalists uh, uh, tell stories, stories that are based on their own skeptical uh, reporting. Uh, the hard truth is they're able to best, best determine it. And sometimes if those stories are compelling enough or dramatic enough or emotional enough, uh, uh, they will catch the eye of Hollywood, which then uh, enlists a screenwriter who will reshape the story and massage it, uh, compress it, sometimes rearrange it, uh, the reality just enough to produce one of those movies that you see that is, quote, based on actual events, unquote. Or to put it another way, the journalists do the rough draft, the uh, first rough draft of history, as journalism is sometimes referred to, and then Hollywood owns the story. Uh, and uh, uh, what the story they tell becomes the history that many of us actually then uh, carry forward and remember. Uh, Mississippi Burning is one of those stories, a story, as they say in the old trailers, ripped uh, from the headlines, uh, a retelling of the investigation into the kidnapping and murders of Michael Cheney, Andrew Goodwin and Michael Schwerner, uh, the three civil rights workers uh, uh, whose brutal killing by the Ku Klux Klan uh, was one of the pivotal moments uh, in the uh, in turning public opinion uh, and the resolve of federal officials against the brutally racist politics of the American South. So 32 years after this film was made and 56 years uh, after the horrific murders that inspired it, uh, it remains a story worthy of, of reflection. The film is not, as Jeff has alluded to, he said loosely based, it is not by any means a documentary uh, uh, a recounting of what happened that freedom summer in Neshoba County, Mississippi, but it is a fascinating watch. Uh, and it poses a lot of interesting questions uh, about our own collective history, about what we choose to recall and remember, celebrate and mourn, uh, when we create art that imitates life. Uh, I think this discussion in particular uh, is relevant at a time when both Hollywood and the media uh, are acknowledging our own lapses then and now uh, in how we engage issues of race and gender and representation in both film and in journalism. Uh, to talk about this story, uh, uh, we have two terrific guests this afternoon. Chris Durello is the screenwriter uh, who wrote Mississippi Burning. Uh, he is a Hollywood veteran whose film credits include the critically acclaimed 1995 HBO production Citizen X, which was also based on actual events, the hunt inside the Soviet Union for a serial killer. Uh, Chris wrote the screenplay and he directed the film, which starred, among others, Donald Sutherland and Max Van Sydow. And Chris is also the screenwriter of the upcoming film Above Suspicion, which will be released soon, starring the actress Amelia Clark, or to those of us who are games uh, of Game of Thrones fans, Calice. Uh, uh, Chris's screenplay is in fact based on the nonfiction book of the same name, Above Suspicion, uh, a story about murder, betrayal, the FBI in West Virginia, not necessarily in that order, uh, written by Joe Sharkey, a journalist author, and I am proud to say good friend, uh, who was also an adjunct professor at the university, uh, and uh, by the way, the husband of Nancy Sharkey, uh, who is my collaborator on this program. Uh, Chris is quite literally a child of Hollywood. Uh, his parents were both involved in the entertainment industry. He is, among other, th other things, an accomplished songwriter and a musician. Uh, and a graduate of Harvard University, or as we like to call it out here, the University of Arizona of the Northeast. <laughs> uh, Chris, thank you very much uh, for making the trip over today from, uh, from Los Angeles. Chris will be joined on stage for a discussion afterwards with uh, our uh, local hero, Will Conroy. Will is best known to all of you, of course, as the president uh, of the Arizona Inn, a fabulous whole, uh, hotel and Tucson landmark uh, Isabella Greenway, his great-grandmother and Arizona's first congresswoman, founded in 1930. Uh, but beyond the walls of the inn, Chris is, uh, rather uh, Will, 
uh, has another very successful life as a film and documentary writer. He was a screenwriter uh, for the 2008 thriller Trans-Siberian, which starred the actors uh, Ben Kingsley uh, and Will uh, Harrelson. And given the subject of today's film, it is also worth noting that Will was part of the team that created the acclaimed civil rights documentary, Eyes on the Prize. Uh, Will also brings another interesting bit of personal background to today's discussion, which I, uh, I won't get ahead of it. He'll talk about it uh, afterwards. Will's stepfather, John Doerr, uh, was the assistant to Attorney General Robert F. Kennedy uh, and the official who was directly in charge of the investigation uh, into the murders uh, of these three civil rights uh, workers that, that is at the center of today's film. So uh, that will be part of today's discussion. So thank you, Will, for agreeing to be here. Uh, and uh, also thank you to your mother, Patty, for your continuing support for the Arizona Inns, continuing support of this program. Uh, the Arizona Inn, the New York Times, the Law Theater uh, are, are among our founding sponsors. And we are really grateful for your commitment to this program, uh, Journalism on Screen. So we'll look forward to seeing you and Chris on stage afterwards. For now, let's watch the 1988 uh, feature film, Mississippi Burning. Thank you all. Thank you.